right now we're going to talk REITs, one of the worst performing S&P sectors this year, as concerns matter over the health of commercial real estate. For more on what lies ahead in this space, let's get out to our Morgan Brennan, live at Delivering Alpha with Blackstone's global co-head of real estate, Kathleen McCarthy. Morgan, over to you. Frank, thanks. And Kathleen, we just got off stage. It's, it's great to have you here. I'm going to start with the same question that we just started with on the panel, and that is there's been a lot of hand-wringing about the state of commercial real estate. Is it warranted? Well, the state of commercial real estate is not one thing. Different sectors are traveling at different speeds, and our job as investors is to put our clients into the sectors that have the best performance. So if you think about the best performing sector is a high conviction for us data centers. What we're seeing is an explosion of demand because this is built on more content creation, more uh, commerce happening over the internet, and then of course now all of the demands for AI. We bought a company called QTS a couple of years ago. In just the last year alone, we've done more leasing of space to our tenants than in the company's first 15 years combined. And we have line of sight to the company being six times bigger than we bought it. It was a $10 billion take private. And that is just because more of our life, more of the world is happening over the internet, the digitalization, driving demand for that asset class. On the other end of the spectrum, of course, is traditional office, uh, well, well-worn subject, but you know, obsolescence of those buildings and now, of course, the weight of higher capital costs um, is having an impact. But across the spectrum, you have different things traveling at different speeds. Yeah, and, and Blackstone is the largest real estate investor, not only in the U.S., but in the world. Yeah. So you certainly have your, your finger on the pulse of some of these different subsectors. You exited office before we even had the pandemic. Uh, why did you do that? And when you start talking about secular growth stories and things like data center, uh, why is that compelling now even in a higher rate environment? Well, we invest thematically and we try to look at the world and what's happening and say, okay, which are the asset classes that are benefiting from tre trends and changes in how people are working and living and shopping and traveling? And on the flip side, we tried to pivot away from more challenged asset classes. And when you think about traditional U.S. office buildings, um, that story is also you know, about who we are. We look very carefully at all of our data. We have $600 billion of real estate, a heritage of studying what's happening in our portfolio to try to inform our next decisions. And what we saw happening was lower cash flow growth, high capex costs, uh, and really a share shift to the newest, best office buildings. And so we felt like we wanted to be in asset classes with strong cash flow growth and short duration leases because we wanted to be positioned in the right sectors and with the ability to grow cash flows in what might be a higher rate environment. And we're living that now. Um, you can think about real estate like any other asset class. If your multiples are not expanding, or in our world, if our cash, if our cap rates are not coming down, we need cash flow growth in order to drive value for our customers. Yeah. And 50% of our portfolio today are in those best weather sectors, logistics, data centers, student housing, where we see strong cash flow growth, and that is helping us deliver continued great performance despite higher rates. Okay, so you just you raised a record $30 billion. $30 billion for your latest real, real estate fund earlier this year. Are you already deploying that capital or are you waiting for values to become more attractive here? Well, there's never an all clear signal. And we've been investing in real estate for 30 years. Um, we know that we always want to be looking for opportunities, but the $30 billion we raised last year um, is something where we're gonna be patient and make sure we're finding the best opportunities. This year, a lot of our activity has really been focused on Europe where we've seen I'd say the most negative sentiment around real estate, around the market environment, translating into opportunities for us to take private companies, to buy assets from sellers looking to delever, buy assets from sellers who are forced to liquidate. And we're doing that, though, of course, still in our highest conviction themes. 50% of our activity this year to date has been in, in logistics because we still see continued growth, high leasing spreads, very low frictional levels of vacancy. And, and we see those assets as, as you know, interesting in our ability to create fundamental value in what is a dislocated environment. Okay, Kathleen McCarthy, Blackstone Global co-head of real estate. Thanks for joining me here at Delivering Alpha. Frank, I'll send it back over to you.